Okay, in this video we're looking at exercise from Lab 12 on bone structure classification. And so we had our basic classification based on shapes and we had to just take all these 206 bones and more or less fit them into these categories of either long, short, flat, irregular, round, sesamoid are, are our categories. Okay, so I have a couple examples here. Of course, if you're a long bone, this fibula here, you've got to be longer than you are wide, right? And the femur is another great example of a long bone. Um, but this would also include any of these, right? Metatarsals here and phalanges. Those are also considered long because, again, they have a, a length that's greater than their, their width, right? The short bones pretty much fall to the tarsals, even these odd ones like the calcaneus, the tarsals, and the right carpals that we have some hands in that box but I'm just gonna use mine right these are short bones again about the same width and um, thickness width length all right so your flat bones this is a lot of your axial and your skull so here's a costal again pretty thin scapula I consider that a flat all right irregular is kind of the none of the above so vertebra right sacrum would give us that idea of just can't quite put that anywhere into long or short, right? And really the only round or sesamoid one we talk about is this nice patella, it's kind of heart-shaped looking. All right, so that's our basic. We then use some vocabulary to describe parts of the long bones, like the femur, right? Whereas between my hands here, diaphysis or shaft of the bone, right? And then the epiphyses, the caps. And so there'll be a proximal epiphyses, again, proximal being closest to the point of attachment, and a distal epiphyses, all right? So these are broad terms. We also use, right, a piece of bone like this where we have the longitudinal section and a cross section to show the um, medullary cavity because you can't see medullary cavities on these bones, right? So we also see, again, this part being the diaphysis and this, again, being that proximal epiphysis and medullary cavity, right, is where we'd see that yellow marrow. And we get this kind of a feeling for that spongy bone. So um, not around these bones anymore because it would have degraded long ago or not be there when you have a resin cast, is this stuff we call the periosteum, all right? So there's some nice connective tissue on the outside of this, separates these bones from each other, and also gives some, allows for some points of attachment. So periosteum would be surrounding this. Now, when we look, Microscopically, we've got two models, right? This one, which is mm, maybe not as cool, arguably, as this one here, all right? We see this periosteum again, right? Here, nice, they intentionally kind of color code this differently. You see how it's anchoring itself into the bone, right? And this is visible on this model too, the periosteum around it. There's an endosteum, which is, of course, the connective tissue that separates the compact bone from the medullary cavity that would be right here, okay? And that's also visible on this model, right? Nice endosteum. This is trying to show you the spaces where you'd have marrow, okay? And so this is typically, again, some compact bone. So compact bone, we know, has it's just tightly packed with osteons, which is the unit the pillar unit coming out at you. Lots and lots of osteons on these models. So that's the unit of structure for bone. They kind of pulled out some lamellae layers here to show you this, and they kind of telescoped out these layers then in one osteon to give you this architecture that we see here. An osteon is organized around your central canal, so blood delivery for these very active cells, right? So here we see some of these osteocytes on the side here, here we see them from front, and here again, they kind of look like little ants. <laughs> An ant farm here, all these osteocytes, these very important bone maintainers, right? Here gives you the, the network of blood that's running through all this. So um, some of this would be, right, these, these perforating canals, and these, these would be central canals. And then there'd even be tiny, tiny little canals called canaliculi, which make up all these kind of small, really, really small lines that you see in lamellae, right? And you get a feel for it when you look at this on the side too. Little canaliculi connect 
the osteocytes to each other. All right? Also on this model, you sometimes see the osteocytes removed. And so what they're trying to show you are the lacunae, the little spaces where the cells resided. Um, so models try to get a lot out <laughs> so that you get a lot of different features. But that's typically what you see. When you look at this model, all right, it really has some of the same stuff, right? Here's how, again, central canals coming up, perforating canals coming over, right? Osteons kind of telescoped out, and lamellae, each of the layers. Um, osteocytes, little spider-looking things, like I said, and all, just all over inside. Um, they're not actually, they, they didn't really create this to show lacunae, but we know the lacunae would be there in this circumstance as well, right? So that gives us a good overview of some of the microscopy and the terms we might ask. We'll probably have like maybe two of these models on your practical to give you this idea. And I think that pretty much takes care of exercise 12. <laughs>